Hi guys! Have a good day! This is Leonard and welcome to LMS Vlog. This is actually the chorizo de Cebu and this one is the famous pinalonan longanisa. So what makes your chorizo de Cebu different? In terms of its color, the uncooked chorizo de Cebu is actually pinkish. However, once it is cooked, it will turn into a bright red. While your pinalonan longanisa is basically brown in its color. In terms of its size, chorizo de Cebu is actually small. And once it is cooked, it will actually shrink and it will turn into a cherry-like size. And it's just perfect for one bite size. So you can actually see the difference in between the size. Among all the longanisa which I have already seen in entire the Philippines, from your Alaminas longanisa, vegan longanisa, pinalonan longanisa, lokban longanisa, imos longanisa, I think the chorizo de Cebu has the smallest size. Now, when you purchase chorizo de Cebu, it comes per dozen. So, kung bibi lang natin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, ang isang big case would have 12 pieces, bite size pieces. And once it is cooked, actually, this one dozen is good for one per dozen. Now, I'm selling this at LMS Kitchen for 4 dozen for the price of 250 pesos. So, ito yung 250. So, in terms of its composition, Normally, longanisa is more on of a lean meat. However, for chorizo de Cebu, it's more on of a fat over the lean meat. But, you will never have that umay factor because chorizo de Cebu has a perfect balance, sweetness, garlicky, saltiness, and sometimes spicy flavor because chorizo de Cebu comes into flavor, sweet and spicy. For today, we will prepare the sweet chorizo de Cebu. Now, before we start cooking, one good technique that I'll be teaching each and every one of you is that whenever you are cooking chorizo or whenever you are cooking longanisa, it's important that you have to prick first the chorizo before cooking them. So, important, eh, you can use toothpick or you can use your fork. Na prick muna siya before you cook it. Why? Para kapag binoil na natin siya on the water hindi siya magi splatter Normally kasi ang ginagawa natin, commonly ang ginagawa, pinapakuluan muna yung chorizo and then pag kumulo na, pag medyo naging firm na siya, medyo naging large na siya, saka lang siya binubutasan or pinibrick. Tendency nagi splatter yung ating mga chorizo or yung mga longganisa and it's going to be a very messy kitchen kapag nag-splatter siya. Napapansin niyo yan pag nagluluto kayong chorizo or ng longganisa, it's important na i-brick muna siya bago siya Pakuloan. Now we're ready, na prick na natin siya, we can now start cooking. Alright, so let's now start cooking. Buksan na natin yung ating kalan. And then, for our cooking technique, what we are going to use is boiling and then after which pan frying. Yun din yung isang technique na gusto kong ituro. Whenever you cook longganisa, mas magandang i-boil muna natin siya sa water. Huwag yung direct na piniprito agad-agad siya sa mantika. Because... Mas magandang, we will allow the oil of the chorizo to render and allow it to cook on its own fat. Ayan. So, ang chorizo de Cebu meron siyang tali. So, tanggalin natin. And then, ikakat natin siya by three. By three yung section niya. So, we will be cooking 48 pieces. So, eto yung 250 pesos na binibenta. I'm open for resellers. PM is the key. Ayan. 
So, ibuboil natin siya sa water. And then, you will notice after which, magre-render yung sarili niyang oil. And we will no longer be adding extra oil already because we will let its own oil to cook the chorizo. Ayan, since na-prick na natin siya kanina, no worries, hindi na siya mag i -splatter. Pakita pa lang sa inyo, ganito kasi yung ginagawa ng karamihan kapag kumukulo na, saka lang nila pinipreak. So, normally pag ganyan yung ginagawa, nag i splatter yung juice. Okay, pag tinamaan ka nun, masakit din yun. So, we will just let it boil until such time na mag-evaporate yung water hanggang sa ang maiwan na lang on the pan will be the oil. And then after which, we will turn the heat into low and then we will let the chorizo cook on its own fat until the sugar will caramelize and will turn the chorizo to a bright red color. And so after a few minutes of boiling, the water is now slowly evaporating and as you can see, the oil is now being rendered. So once in a while, it's important that you have to turn the chorizo so that there will be an even cooking on all its sides. So the water has finally evaporated. We will slow down the heat because we don't want to burn immediately the sugar on the chorizo. Right, so as you can see, the sugar is now caramelizing which will give that bright red color on our chorizo. So we will be stirring it once in a while so that the melted sugar will coat the chorizo. Now, it's now cooking on its own fat. See? Okay, the fat has now landed. Okay, so, no need to add oil when you are preparing chorizo de chorizo. I can now smell the aroma of our chorizo de chimu. It really smells good. It's very aromatic. The taste of chorizo de Cebu can be likened actually into a tocino because one of its ingredients is actually the tocino powder. Alright? So, in Cebu, they do actually prepare chorizo de Cebu in two ways. One is this one, pan frying, and then the other one is being grilled. So, when you go to Cebu, you go to Larshan. It's just like their local dampa, and you can actually see there a lot of hilera of barbecue stalls which sells chorizo de Cebu, which is plain grilled or charcoal grilled. Alright, so we are almost good. So as you can now see from its pinkish color when it is raw, now it now turned into a bright red color. So once you achieve this color, we are now good with our chorizo de Cebu. Now, kapag mahilig kayo sa sinangag, you can actually use this in doing your sinangag. Presenting to you our Chorizo de Cebu. Kainan na! And if you do love this video, please do like and share and drop a comment. At kung bago ka sa channel natin ito, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at hampasin ang notification bell para ikaw ay parating updated sa ating mga newly uploaded videos. Thank you guys for watching!